In this episode of Hot Hardware, it's two and a half geeks. We're going to have some dandy desktop gaming PCs and the sights and sounds of crazy PAX East coming up next. And welcome back, my brothers and sisters, to yet another fine episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks live stream. Yes, we're alive. We're not Memorex. Um, we survived. Oh, <laughs> That's some old school stuff, right, buddy? Yeah, if people are like, what the hell is Memorex? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tape. That's a tape uh, manufacturer from the good old days. Um, yeah, no, that's classic stuff. I'm teaching them vintage things, dude. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep the youngins in the know, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we survived last week. We uh, we were running around crazy. Uh, actually, headed out to Pax East in Boston here in my backyard. That was a lot of fun. We'll be getting to that shortly. Uh, but it's been crazy busy. Lots of uh, new hardware on the horizon um lots of testing going on in the labs of various platforms uh both desktop and mobile um but what's uh, new and exciting in your world young young fair marco Chipetta, who's who's with me as always chris is here but we're gonna keep him the man behind the curtain because he's busy so he's just doing the knobs and dials for now right marco yeah, man. So not, not nothing much new going on over here. Had a, a meeting with a, a large OEM today in Manhattan. Saw some new stuff that we'll be able to tell you about next month. Um, I finally got a couple of 3090 Ti's in. So we are going to put those on the test bench soon. Have a really beautiful 3080 Ti notebook that should have the review posted soon. Finished a big project that you know that was going on in the background. So I feel like I gave birth this week. But other than that, not much going on. Marco giving birth. Now, that's a uh, concept that I'd rather not wrap my head around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it would not be pretty. <laughs> but giving birth in the metaphorical sense to uh, to projects. Yeah, that's a good thing for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, 3090 TIs. Holy crap. Um, yeah, They must be massive. You have some OEM a AIB partner cards um, in, in house? Yeah, hold, hold up, hold up. Hold yeah, yeah, up. yeah. Let's 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 take a look at the goods. Don't hold out on us. Don't yeah. hold out on us. Yeah. Hey, let's get that focus going. I I don't know why I didn't grab it sooner. This is um the the ASUS Tough GeForce RTX 3090 Ti. That's, oh, that's tasty. Uh, yeah, that's um that's a big boy. Oh, it is it is not small. I haven't plugged it into the test rig yet, so I can't really comment on anything. I, I have all the photography done and all that good stuff. It's sitting right next to my test rig right here. I just haven't actually fired it up yet. That's mm. a um, gorgeous card though, right? Good looking card. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Well well made. It's, it's probably got some RGB bling in there, I would imagine. Right? For, for scale. <laughs> yeah, and your head is massive, so that's a freaking My, my head card. is gigantic. <laughs> so, yes. It's all those brains. It's bigger than your brains. It's, yeah, no, right. it's definitely it's definitely not all the brains. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. And, and, and are the others much smaller? Or are they all? Like, that's a triple slot dealie, right? I, um, I haven't even opened the, the the second one that showed up. It just showed up. It's yeah. still in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get some fun from EVGA, right? I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So EVGA and ASUS 3090 Ti's on tap. Stay tuned for that. Um, I've got all kinds of stuff over here as well. I've been playing around with all their like notebooks. I have the Samsung Galaxy Book Two, uh, Galaxy Book Two Pro 360. It's a uh, 360 degree hinged beauty. We'll be talking about that later on in the show. Uh, interesting to evaluate Alder Lake. I'm reaching over for it. Alder Lake mobile with fewer than 14 cores. In this case, it's not a gaming lap laptop. It's a three pound machine. So that'll be an interesting discussion. Marco, you were about to say something. I could hear you take a breath. I was going to say, did you tweak your lighting? Because your video is looking phenomenal today phenomenal video today it must be it must be you i was i was just so excited to see you that the pixels are popping better for some reason it could be that it could, it could be that <laughs> um no yeah maybe maybe a lighting change um i'm glad uh, the feed is better we always we always yeah. try and keep our game as high as possible yes. uh, sp speaking of which i'm going to imbibe today on the cast because it is beer 30 here in new england in the boston area and today i will be partaking in a little sam adams Wicked Double Juicy New England IPA. Wicked Double. Wicked. 
Sam wicked. Adams. Wicked good wicked. kid. It's going to be wicked good be a kid. I'm so, being a yeah. good boy. I have my cold water. That's it. Yeah. You're always hydrating, which is, you know, admirable of you. I'm going to hydrate with some barley and hops to go with it. Yeah. You know? The problem is I, I hydrate way too often with pizza and wings and this happened to the face. So <laughs> pizza and wings. Yeah, that's another way to hydrate. You get your electrolytes in there, I'm sure, somehow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pl- plenty of sodium. <sighs> there you go. There you go. Well, geez, it's too bad we didn't have Chris for the banter and to ask what what beer he's got, but um he's he's working hard and uh feverishly turning the knobs and dials. Hopefully will keep us schmove today. Uh, but let's let's dig in. Let's dig into uh some of the good stuff. Um, because we've got a couple of really you know, these days, um, pre-built systems have a whole new value proposition, right? It seems like, you know, certainly with the crazy component prices, which, by the way, thankfully, are uh, getting a little bit more reasonable by the day almost, uh, coming down quickly now, but still not quite there yet to MSRP. But pre-built systems have, you know, the promise or the potential for offering really good value relative to these crazy individual component prices these days. So pre-builds, you know, can get you a list of products, um, you know, hardware products um, for potentially cheaper than if you could piece, piece them together yourself these days. So we took a look at a couple of uh, pre One was a, one was a, a boutique beauty from the folks at origin. And now they are owned by Corsair, but this is origin PC going to drop a link in the chat and uh, the Origin PC Neuron 4000X review, a powerful, clean 12th gen gaming PC. Uh, there it is right there. That is Keith May's studio. Uh, pegboard in the back, lighting, all that good stuff. But um, yeah, it is a, um, a custom-built uh, PC in a Corsair chassis with Corsair liquid cooling and uh, some serious firepower. Uh, Core i9-12900K. And of course, uh, GeForce RTX 3080 Ti, the ASUS Tough 3080 Ti, under the hood there, pushing the pixels. What 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 are your thoughts on this bad boy? And uh, I guess maybe even relative to the value side of it, but performance, value, all that good stuff, Marco. What do you what do you, what do you think of that kid? Performance, value, all that good stuff. So, <laughs> you know, value is is interesting because, you know, as you mentioned, component prices are so crazy. Sometimes it's better to buy a pre-built now, you know, unless you're, you know, don't need a whole new rig. Um, scoring that GPU nowadays, maybe scoring that uh, DDR5 memory can get nuts, whereas the system builders have access, have easier access to lots of the hardware. And I'm sure there's, you know, a, a little bit of cost passed on to consumers, but not like a scalper on eBay or an Amazon store. So this particular rig, I think it was about forty seven ninety seven, was the sticker price for this really high end config that we had. You know, which had a um, Core i nine twelve nine hundred K thirty eighty Ti. Uh, D- I think it was um, thirty two gigs of fifty two hundred megahertz DDR five memory. You know, dual storage setup. So really nice rig in a good looking case with liquid cooling and, you know, expertly routed cables and just, you know, someone that cares about gaming PCs built this thing. So to score a rig like that for that price, the values there, especially if you compare to some of the really customized boutique builds, say with custom paint or a, a, a proprietary chassis, all that stuff. You know, you could get a similarly performing rig that's thousands more, you know, from some other boutique builders. And for my taste, I got to say, as much as I I love the look of like hardline cut tubing and a really beautiful build, mm. it scares me personally to have to work on a rig like that. So I I dig this middle ground where you get an expertly built gaming rig high-end hardware technically off the shelf stuff but at least you know it's going to be perfect when it arrives and it, it's it's immaculate does it have the beautiful hardline crazy stuff going on no is it nice heck yeah you know so i like it yeah 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 no absolutely i'm just gonna i'm gonna scroll back to this guy here um the the cooler in it is a corsair uh hi h100i or something like that let me let me scroll back up to the specs so i get that right uh, the cooler is really sweet. It's a Corsair IQ H100i Elite with LCD pump cover, which, as you can see there, is spinning some sort of crazy message there, but can also give you readouts of CPU temps. Obviously, that's as an idle temp at 27C there. Um, <laughs> 
but it's actually it's actually it's really cool it actually adds a little bit of extra bling to look through at the window i kind of like that and i like being able to monitor quickly look over and see how the baby's doing um but yeah you make a good point now i have a i have a main gear vibe that we built custom with the guys at main gear and you know let's face it they build some of the best built best looking custom hardline liquid cooled pcs on the market i mean their stuff is just gorgeous um however you're absolutely right when you talk about all-in-one solutions which is what we've got here that that's an all-in-one cooler from corsair that's in this origin rig um versus all-in-one solutions you know the hardline setup there's maintenance involved you know uh i've had this for geez i don't know it's probably about three years now anyways and it's been super stable rock solid killer performance love it love it love it can't say enough about it <clears throat> but you know, once in a while, um, burping air bubbles out of it, you know, hitting the BIOS, maxing out the pump speeds to, you know, get pu push some air out because eventually the the liquid cooling does, you know, it, it, it I, I believe it must evaporate because, you know, you, you end up with air in the system and then you have to top it off a little bit more. It evaporates over time and you have to flush because eventually bacteria is going to gonna grow so even if it's got antimicrobial properties in the liquid cooling you have to drain and flush for maintenance and then i did have a leak at one point the what the the cpu block eventually you know a few years down the road decided oh i'm gonna give up the ghosts <laughs> and it had a, a, a small leak so i replaced that i will say nothing was injured you have this you know anti um you know non-conductive antimicrobial liquid in there but there's a maintenance factor that with an all-in-one setup doesn't really exist unless you have an issue with your all-in-one, right, Marco? Yeah, I mean, you still the same things could happen with an all-in-one. Just to, yeah, you have le less tubing, it's less permeable, it's sealed, so it's less. There's less evaporation and less likely to have issues. But you know, we've had seen issues across some of the all-in-ones as well. Um, it, it is what it is. It's just a, a fact of liquid cooling. But yeah, the yeah. hard line's a different animal. You don't have the flexibility to move stuff. If you're, you know, swapping apart, you're draining that whole thing and putting it back together. So it's it's a different sort of beast. You know, you get what you pay for. It's beautiful. The hard line tubing is just, you know, there's nothing like seeing a custom rig with, you know, like your setup is gorgeous. It's just, a, it's a different sort of beast. And if you're not looking for that sort of commitment to a rig, something like this is kind of perfect. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, let me add this back to the stream. Corsair does a nice job um, <clears throat> with coordinating lighting and, and all the bling. Here you've got, you know, you can dial in lighting on the, the CPU cooler. You can dial in lighting on the Dominator RAM um, and then chassis lighting as well, all from the IQ software. Benchmarks, you know, this thing, go figure. By the way, it can pull up to 730 watts <laughs> when you really. And you know what's funny? Scro when scroll you max back up. Scroll back up, my 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 crazy mind. If you flip it over, it's hot as hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You know you you are a kid at heart and and mind. So. I am so I'm, I tell you, I joke around on the cast that I use a good 30, 40 percent of my brain power to not say inappropriate things. It might yeah. be closer to sixty. It's yeah. uh, it's just think, that's how the monkeys I'm, up here work. I think you're right. I think you're preserving yeah, 60% <laughs> of your brain power to not say something offensive. Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, here's a, here's a decibel meter reading from it. Uh, so quiet, quiet as a mouse, right? 41.8 yeah. DB. That's, that's real quiet. And when you start getting up towards 50 DB, that's when things start to get a little annoying. Um, as you might expect, there's that Alder Lake on the Z690 motherboard. 14 core Alder, Alder Lake, the 12 900K, Core 9 1200 900K, excuse me, cranking out some serious multi threaded performance. Uh, I think we got a little bit more juice from Falcon Northwest, but not a lot. It's, you know, within, you know, hair's distance. Um, and then, uh, you know, more more benchmarks, more of the same, trading, trading blows. It's right there at the top of the stack. This is a uh, speedometer, which is a, you know, sort of, high responsive, light duty, bursty, you know, browser application benchmark and uh, top of PC mark. And then when you get into gaming, I mean, the thing's just, you know, a 14 core Alder Lake with a 3080 Ti, that's what it's going to do. It's going to kick butt. <laughs> yep. Um, 
Yeah, let's see. Let's let's get a couple of uh, new but while you're scrolling, here. I need to say he- hello to Tuan and to Steez. Steez making the grand appearance a couple of podcasts back and subscribe. Oh, yeah, here he oh, is yeah? again. Thank you for hanging out with us, sir. Steez with with S T E E Z, yes, sir. All right, Steez, good to have you with us, <laughs> brother or sister, whatever that name might be. Um, so yeah, good stuff there from the folks at um. At Origin and Corsair, I actually uh, bumped into uh, the former, well, he's CEO of Origin. Stop and, and scrolling. I think he, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, he's Kevin, Kevin Wilsniewski, who is uh, former CEO of Origin. I think he's now a uh, probably a general manager of the PC division, uh, part of Corsair. Corsair acquired Origin Systems. I'd have to look up his official title. Great guy. Saw him there. Uh, saw some some of their rigs at PAX. When I say saw him there, I was at PAX where I saw him. And um, yeah, good folks. I think since the merger uh, or since the acquisition, they've uh, really come together well. Kevin's saying that um, you know the folks at Corsair are letting Origin do their thing, do what they do best. You know, not trying to um, you know reinvent the wheel after the acquisition, and so keeping keeping the team intact and letting them do what they do best just give them more resources to go. Uh, Make beautiful PCs like that. So. I, I think if my memory serves, we first met Kevin when he launched Origin at yeah. CES like 10, 12 years ago, right? Yeah. Before well, they had a rig or when they had just launched their first rig. I think. Yeah. 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 No, we're we're you're you're dating us again, but that's easy to do <laughs> because we've been around far too long. Yeah, yes, yeah. I think you're absolutely right. I think we we met Kevin in the very early days when they were just getting started when they started up. Um yeah. didn't didn't Kevin did he have roots in uh Alienware at some point? I want to say I he did. I don't remember. I think so. I don't remember though. Maybe I'm maybe I'm mixing the blood there, but um anyways, yeah, no, good stuff from the folks at Origin and Corsair. Uh you know, when when one of the top tier component manufacturers and peripheral you know and cooling manufacturers gets together with one of the top tier system builders boutique system builders good things good things happen and uh yeah the origin origin pc neuron 4000x you don't have to dial in the 4800 config that we did um you can <laughs> certainly you can certainly build it a lot cheaper but if you want the utmost firepower that takes all the benchmark wins then uh, then that's what we tested <laughs> good stuff yeah, all right, well let's uh, let's move on to another desktop. This one's definitely a lot more reasonable, uh, and this is Dell's XPS desktop eighty nine fifty. Um, and let's uh, let's share that one out, Chris, as well. Thank you, sir. So yeah, the Dell XPS desktop eighty nine fifty review Intel twelfth gen Tower of Power. That's what we said. Hey, how are you liking those rhymes, folks? Good stuff, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, no, there it is, right there. So. Plain Jane, right? I mean, let's just say it like it is that, you know, it's not a boutique build. It's a little bit more of a gray box or a white box kind of look, a little bit more utilitarian, if you will. I dig um, it. I dig it too. It's understated. Yeah. It's quiet. It's not like, you know, you're going to, you're not going to turn any heads with RGB bling here, but it's got all the, the, uh, facilities you need including uh I, that's an optical drive marco holy crap uh, yeah it's like uh, <laughs> so i'm sure there's some people on the stream going, what the heck is that what's the slot yeah. at the top that's a it's a that's a cd rom or a dvd rom probably a dvd drive my goodness yeah. wow i didn't know they still made those yep they do and there it is um so yeah the uh the xps 8950 also we'll scroll right here also an Intel Alder Lake system, Core i5, 12600K. That's six performance cores, and uh, I think that's actually wrong. It says four E cores. Is that right? Is that I right? believe so, yeah. I, I think that's I correct. Look at the, okay, I thought it was, I don't know, I thought it was more than uh, in the E cores. Anyways, uh, 16 threads of processing. No, that would that would make sense. That would add up um, because the six P cores are uh, hyper-thread incapable. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM, DDR5, 4,800, although Dell had it clocked down to 4,400. Kind of a head-scratcher there, but I don't think it really impacted performance all that much. And then a GeForce RTX 3060 Ti, light hash rate, mind you, on board. If you want to do some mining, you know, you might not care for that, but other than that, if you're a gamer. Um, so... 
thoughts, Marco? This is this is definitely a well built machine um, with, and you know, a, a good layout, accessible layout. Wanted to get to that right there. There you go. Very accessible. Little bit, you know, cabling is tidy, but it's not to the level of a boutique build where everything's behind the motherboard tray. It's all sort of zip tied off and gathered off there. But um, lots of room to move in there, and um, and an all in one liquid cooler as well. So kind of an interesting setup. Yeah, so leave this pickup too, because I think yeah. we want, we got to talk about two things in this rig. So in terms of the looks, like I'm all about the understated aesthetics. I'm, I'm in a um, holy crap, I forgot what case I'm using in my rig, um, <laughs> but it's you know it, it's got basically no, it's got a window and I have some RGB inside the system, but it's basically just a black box. So I I sort of like the cleaner chassis uh, externally. It would be nice mm -hmm. if it wasn't some exposed steel like that. But, mm. you know, that's going to be facing the back. It is what it is. If you're, you're not approaching your PC from behind, don't sweat it. Now, in terms of the build and, and everything, the great thing about a system like this is the price, right? So $1,797, I think it was. Yeah, under yep. $1,800 for the config we had with GDR5. Core i5 12600K is one of the best bangs for bang for the buck for gaming right now. Just just a great all around CPU. Mm -hmm. um, 3060 Ti's they're selling for like 800 bucks ish still. So you know for this kind of rig for that kind of money, it's all it's it's almost a steal in the current market. Now in terms of performance, it lands right where you'd expect. It's a little lower. So uh, Zach did some cool stuff with the testing in this article because um, he used some of the test rigs that I built for graphics tests for some for some comparisons. And it shows the advantages of when you have, you know, super clean OS install with XMP enabled on the RAM and all that good stuff. So you get obviously a few extra percentage points for over a rig like this. Unfortunately, it seems like the BIOS in the rig is is not fully optimized for alder lake and z690 because you couldn't enable xmp and the mm -hmm. ram was running slower than officially supported with the processor which held it back slightly and the two they're not deal breakers but there's two important considerations one mm. the the power supply is using a non-standard form factor so it's still a standard uh, in terms of its power output it, using the ATX spec, but the form factor is smaller. It's a proprietary PSU. Dell does sell them. You can opt. This is the bigger one. So there is a smaller one available for uh, lower powered rigs, but that's a, a, a consideration. And the motherboard is proprietary. So mm -hmm. it's effectively a, a micro ATX board with an extra PCB attached for those front-mounted connectors. The front connectors on the case are not attached via a cable and a separate PCB. There's actually like a leg coming off the motherboard. So let's say you, you know, you swap the motherboard out on this thing, you're going <clears> to <throat> lose those front ports. Conversely, if you wanted to put these parts in another case, it's not going to fit. So kind of let me go back i'm gonna try and go back to that can you can we see that in this right here so i don't know if you could see it great but where the front ports are it's, yeah it's uh, like at the top there's like another l that comes off on the on the okay there okay interesting okay and if you go yeah. to the pick there's actually a picture of the back of the rig and you can see the shape of the the power supply at one point so it might uh, be lower. lower either lower okay. or on the next page uh okay let's look at that no no, no, no that's bios no no no, no yeah no. Um, I, I know that there was a pick of the back of the rig somewhere you can see the shape i must be on the must be on the first page we can find that hang on a second eh. oh okay yeah there it is right there yeah shut it up boom see it's and that that's not like an sfx power supply or it's it's actually a, a custom form factor mm. so a little bit you know of a you know just be aware of it right so if if you would like to swap out a power supply you have to go to dell for that and the same thing uh in terms of the motherboard right so not mm -hmm. non-proprietary form factor there <clears throat> or i should say non-standard yeah. proprietary form factor excuse me yeah and we have some comments actually from both uh from both chris and and steve uh some of the alienware auroras did something similar with the front io extension mm, yeah yep yeah, no, I mean it, it. It's definitely one of those things where I think I think Dell 
Uh, and this is interesting too. I like how they give you instructions on how to maintain or get access to, you know, they show you here how you release the bracket for the, uh, for the GPU, all these different, you know, pictorial instructions inside the case. That's, that's good stuff right there. But, you know, there's a reason why manufacturers go this semi custom route. And usually it's, you know, cost and, and design and, you know, thermals and all that good stuff to try and optimize it as much as possible. Sometimes it's manufacturing, you know, ease of manufacturing. I don't think it's a, you know, you think proprietary and they're like, oh no, that we want to want to have folks come back to us. It's not the, um, I hate to say it. It's not the Apple mentality here at play. I think it's, it's a lot more than that. <laughs> usually, usually design and uh, cost and all that good stuff comes into play. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, the, the scores were pretty good. I mean, you know, looking back at the benchmarks um, you know, this thing's, it's got a 3060 TI in here. So, you know, think about, um, you know, here's, here's a test right here, Tomb Raider, you know, at 1440 P it's still, it's still pulling, you know, mins in the, in the 79 range. So <clears throat> really can't com complain there. It's, it's clocking in basically where it should. It's behind a 3070, but, you know, kind of on the heels of a 2080 TI from the previous generation. And, uh, but you get, you know, all that goodness of, uh, you know, the latest uh, engines for DLSS and ray tracing and all that good stuff as well. So, yep. Yeah, that's the, that's the Dell uh, XPS uh, 8950. And um, yeah, as you noted, Marco, a good value if you're talking, you know, if you're looking for a desktop and you want to get some decent firepower these days, you know, well under $2,000 for really what, what's a, what's a solid gaming configuration for, for most folks. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, especially that, that Core i5, I'm still like still impressed from our launch coverage on just how fast that chip is under 300 bucks. Yeah, you know, that, that's what's interesting about about all the lake in general. And we're still getting to know it on the mobile side, I think, in, in different, you know, thin form factors, certainly in the gaming notebook form factor, you know, with a with a 12 900 in, in, a, in a gaming notebook. Um, it's impressive there as well. But then you want to look at Alder Lake as it scales down in terms of thermals and power. And we'll be talking about uh, the Galaxy Book Pro 2, uh, excuse me, Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 in a little bit. Um, but on the desktop, Alder Lake's pretty dang solid, you know, in, in terms of value and performance. It's uh, it's a real good, real good chip, especially for gamers, right? Yeah, I mean, at the at the very very top end, it's kind of on on the bleeding edge in terms of power and pushing what these the first batch can do. But it, it, once you go down the stack a little bit, it's it's really interesting. You know, you get that nice multi threaded benefit from all of those cores with you know a handful of the P cores, which are really excellent, especially for you know bursty workloads. The, the experience is really good, and you, and you don't need like crazy cooling, et cetera for any of the mainstream parts. So yes, definitely a, definitely a nice chip for desktop. Yeah. Six and six and eight P cores, I think in the configurations we've been looking at um, that's, that's solid for, for, for gamers, for sure. It really does a nice job. And then you get the E cores to back it up for the background tasks and the, uh, the low, low priority tasks. So good stuff. Um, <clears throat> all right. Let's, uh, let's talk about uh, PAX East and I guess we'll, we'll stay on the, uh, the Intel vein. Um, Intel lays down a huge show of 12th gen gaming force at PAX East. Now, PAX East, if you're if you're not familiar, is uh, PAX is actually the Penny Arcade Expo from days gone by. It's now called just PAX, and uh, East is here in Boston. Uh, it's right uh, right at the Boston Convention Center downtown Boston on the waterfront. By the way, great venue, great location. So cool to finally be back in full you know in-person event kind of stuff and uh, as you can see here's the here's the show floor right there um tons of folks tons of gamers everybody's you know partying having a good time there's you know gaming competitions and uh gaming arenas at lots of different booths and it's really a fun event you know un unfortunately we all had to wear masks <laughs> or fortunately as the case may be that's definitely the conservative safe way to go um you know and and you had to have proof of vaccination to get in you know if if that's not your thing if you don't like wearing a mask and you weren't you want you didn't want to have a vaccination that might be a bit of a hurdle for you but 
it was nice to be back in the real with manufacturers on the trade show floor, everybody geeking out, looking at all the technology. Intel, as we noted in our article, absolutely invested in this show. Um, huge show of force, huge spread. Their booth was easily the largest at the show. So big investment in gamers and the gamer community. And they actually, you know, took it in, in a lot of different directions. They had an onstage um, show where they had doing, they were doing builds, custom builds with, with PCs. They were doing unboxings with laptops. They were doing interviews and all that kind of content, uh, you know, sort of round table panel chats and things like that. And then they had, you know, the arena where, you know, a bunch of desktops and laptops to game on and people, you know, just hopping on their machines. Um, and then the other thing that was awesome is they had a bunch of custom built, you know, super boutique, beautiful PCs at their booth as well. And it it literally consumed almost front to back uh, at one on one side of packs. You can see it right there. That's kind of the width, maybe a little bit on the other side of that wall as well. But it was deep, it was wide, and it was well, you know, uh, populated with tons of different interesting stuff, um, including there's a beautiful main gear rig. There, that's the main gear rush um, with hardline liquid tubing and that super cool apex distribution block. And that's a Core i9 12900K with a 3080 Ti under the hood as well. Lots of different machines on on display and uh, a, a spectacle of pc gaming geekdom it was awesome what are your thoughts marco we uh we we didn't get a chance to get you in it uh this year but but man it was so fun to see all the all the cool bling yeah i mean i know i would i know i would have dug it um I, i'm gonna pop something on the screen you tell me if i'm allowed to mention what we found out after the fact about <laughs> being on display. arc was not on display not on display but it was however <laughs> yes we, we have it on good authority and i think we can say this i asked multiple times i by the way i bumped into tuan he was there tuanis he was there uh had a great lunch with my buddy tuan from intel um so great to see you my friend and um and tons of other you know intel gear on on display i kept asking tuan hey where's arc where's arc man come on hook me up and he's like nah not nah, don't have anything he was he was totally schultzing me now i'm going i'm going to date myself <laughs> there there too he's like i know nothing i hear nothing i say nothing so that's from hogan's heroes in case you don't know schultz um anyways he, so you know i got, got no arc um but we have it on good authority that arc was actually running a few of the demos behind the scenes and yes intel didn't tell anybody <laughs> exactly <laughs> so it was alive it was there it was running a few things but we didn't see it we couldn't touch it we couldn't you know play with it and we gonna do is what it is yeah um but i tell you you know here's here's another beautiful setup from origin um this is uh a, a, obviously a, a liquid cooled pc with soft line cooling interesting little fish tank pump reservoir do you do you know what do they call those mark i always see those and, and to me they look a little little freaky see it right there on the front yeah it's just a reservoir it's a little reservoir it's got a little tube it's got a return tube and a pump tube and uh i don't know it, it just looks to me like there's this thing sloshing around it, it looks I have, cool I, I have to back up for one more second yeah so i'm popping something up from steez um saying only south korea got arc so only south korea got the initial release of samsung's notebook we right. have info about that that we probably can't talk about but the software demo at pax was on a desktop gpu right or am i correct getting that wrong? correct okay yeah so correct. yes something is happening there was a desktop <laughs> Uh, we were we, we were having on good authority that there was a desktop card running some demos um <clears throat> but yes uh, arc did show up in notebooks only in korea samsung seemed to only get some units out in korea um that were arc discrete gpu enabled i have the samsung galaxy book 2 uh, pro 360 here that's 
running Intel integrated graphics, Iris XE graphics. So uh, we have not seen ARC discrete mobile here in the US yet, but we are told that there are many, um, <clears throat> there are several, you know, major OEMs with, uh, you know, systems coming. So stay tuned. Um, and then here's a, here's a great in-win build, uh, or oh, it's an in-win chassis, custom chassis with some serious, it looks like brass, but I'm not sure if it's actually brass. That would probably be too soft for the uh, hardline cooling, but man, talk about a, Talk about a cool rig, right? Look at that thing, Marco. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't do it for me. No, no, not your thing. I think it's kind of cool. I, I, I need I need more symmetry going on. Yeah, here, here here's the fish tank. <laughs> remember that? No, it's the case. I forget who did that case. Oh, I don't remember. Uh, uh, someone uh, painted this red, and I'm not fond of that. But that's the uh, that case was all over the show. Um, I don't know who did it. We 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 wrote about it on the site. Um, let me see if I can find it. Is it rocket? R O C C A. Uh, it's the height. Who is that? Who's that case? Fish tank. Let me let me see if I can. Oh, uh, the, the height the height Y sixty. Steve's to the rescue. This is a fantastic viewer. I buy power. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We had one from I buy power here. I'll I'll drop this and we can share it out. Um, boom, boom. So, this is what it looks like. It's actually actually kind of cool, right? <clears throat> it looks that's like that's an eye by power build. It looks like a transporter from Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, what's the yeah, what's the case? The height, uh, the height Y60. Height, height Y60. There it is, right there. He was right. Steez, you're the man or the woman. <laughs> no, you must be a man. Tell us what you are, Steez. <laughs> and if you prefer to be nothing, then that's fine too. Um, yeah, that you get in, I guess, sort of a three-sided view. It's it's kind of cool. But those are those were all over packs. Lots of folks building in that, showing off the goods. It's a cool, cool setup, really. Yep. Um, let's go back. Uh, let's see what else we had here. Oh, this guy. This guy's cool. There you go. So this guy was doing photo ops <laughs> for Intel. That guy's like, he's at least 10 feet tall. He might be more like 12. Oh, there and, was someone in there? Yeah, there was a dude walking in that thing. And he walked really really smooth like fluid like he's on stilts or something because because the thing's like 12 feet tall that's not a really great picture the guy that's next to him on the left was kind of his handler setting up people to take photos he was taking pictures um but that dude was really tall and he's walking around like it was nothing and he had this really cool kind of booming voice he's like oh i'm the <laughs> intel you know whatever <clears throat> transformer pc guys you can see he's got like rgb fans and cases strapped on him it was cool that was <laughs> that was cool stuff um and then the other thing that was cool i want this and i want it for wall art they were printing mouse pads um but it's it's uh, intel had this thing called the artist series and collaborated with 20 uh, uh, unique artists around the world for sort of tech related art this is this was my favorite because it's super retro there was a bunch of stuff <clears throat> you know it, it ranged the gamut there was some really cool artwork but they were printing these on mouse pads as well and selling them this is really cool you got the laptop there you got ultima underworld uh doom command and conquer look at that <laughs> i'll go i'll go even more nerdy missed have in a, the cd you, you rom drive <laughs> a gravis gamepad on the left those are the buttons yeah. from the gravis gamepad you have a yep. tamagotchi on the mouse pad us robotics v92 modem uh, external modem oh where's that on the right it's right oh, there on yeah. the right next to the cd Dude, rom you, drive <laughs> and and you know that's a us robotics v92 how do you know that i know it might not be a v92 but that was the style i believe for the v92 absolutely the, yeah uh, us external. robotics i remember that yep. yeah Wow, that's cool. I, I would then, love that too. And then look at that. That's a Toshiba. That looks like a Toshiba Protege laptop yeah. with the goofy mouse thingy. I I hated that <laughs> personally. <laughs> it wasn't my. I think style I have one in the control. garage. I have a a bunch of old notebooks. I got roped into. Uh, long story, but I have a bunch of old notebooks. If anybody wants retro notebooks, with like with cases mint. <laughs> that's it. That's a Tuan thing. He loves the retro and reviving it. Um, if if Tuan's still with us, yeah, in the in the in the audience. Um, yeah, no, it, it's 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 amazing. People people don't recall, but Toshiba was huge in laptops back in the day because they were the first, some of the first to come out with 
these portable computers that people were like, oh, it's not 500 pounds. <laughs> it's, it's, we can put it in a bag. Yeah. Two on, um, if you want them, I'm going to ship them. I got, they're all the way back to Windows 95 and Windows ME. Um, and they're I, all made like with all the accessories and everything. I've got a couple as well. I've got a, uh, God, I think I've got a, an Alienware dual GPU. I think it's got like Radeon 480 or something under the hood. It's like crazy. And it's like Windows 7. And if you want it to on, you might, you might, uh, <laughs> you know, geek out on that. But yeah, no, it was, it was really cool stuff. Um, you know, it was great to see Intel out, you know, engaging with gamers, catering to gamers. Um, the other thing that was cool, and let me let me see if I can pull it up. Chris, you can take me off the share right now so I don't drive people crazy. And I'm going to search for it right now. But AMD had a presence at PAX. Let me see if I can find it. Um, hang on one second. Yeah, AMD oh, had yeah. a presence at, at PAX as well. Let me see if I can search this up. And they were doing some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, let me. I found it. There it is right here. So let me get this going. Um <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so we we put out this article here. They were actually at PAX. They were selling Radeon RX 6000 cards and the 5800X3D, which no one can seem to get. They were selling it at MSRP. I saw this awesome freaking uh, Halo Infinite themed Radeon RX uh, 6900 XT live in the flesh. Um, we had, we had seen that before. That was announced before. It's a limited edition thing, but they actually had one, and it's really cool. It's a cool looking card. Um, but they were actually selling. Check a box. There's the pricing. You know, sixty eight hundred XT for six forty nine MSRP, six nine hundred for a thousand, and then the fifty eight hundred X three D for four forty nine. All all MSRP and they were taking orders and they were going to ship direct to gamers at PAX, which I thought was really cool. You know, they actually made an effort to, you know, get out there, you know, put aside a kitty of, of product uh, for gamers to sell directly. You don't have to go through new egg. You don't have to do some lottery or whatever and, or, or, or beat the bots or whatever. You can just buy a card in MSRP. I thought that was a nice gesture um, and hopefully a sign of, better availability and better pricing right marco yeah and, you know they actually uh amd had a bunch of high-end cards i think they're still in stock if you buy direct from amd.com i think mm -hmm. they're holding a bunch of stuff back for events and for stuff like this uh and for their own website um because the stuff that gets out in the wild you know you know who knows what the uh you know what the channel partners are going to do and what scalpers are going to do so at least some gamers are able to get stuff at msrp and that's good yeah yeah it it just seemed like you know somebody somebody thought you know what what could we do that could bring some value beyond just hey let's show our wares and they certainly had a, a, a nice booth as well with lots of you know custom gaming rigs and laptops going on uh tons of gaming laptops i was interested to see a, a few different uh, models that i hadn't seen before um but yeah, it was it was good that they thought out of the box and they're like, hey, you know, let's 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 see if we can bring some value and make some product available to people that actually, you know, can't get their hands on it otherwise. So I thought that was a, a nice gesture from the folks yep, at AMD. Good, good stuff. All right. <clears throat> well, let's move on from PAX. Um, let's talk this guy, I guess, right, Marco? You want to talk the uh, Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360? Yeah, you 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 should you kind of showed it off last uh, podcast, but the full review is up if you want to see the performance numbers and Dave's full review. You know, I should probably let you lead a little bit because you did it. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. No, I, please. I've been I've been doing all the app in here. Um, but yeah, there it is. The Galaxy Book Two Pro Three Hundred and Sixty. Um, this thing is. Let me get down to the specs. This thing weighs in at three point one pounds. Uh, on board is a Core i seven twelve sixty. Can I can I pause you for one second? Yeah, I'm gonna pause you for one second. I picked up a 12 inch Alder Lake U notebook. Um, was it you or Alder Lake P? You did. I don't remember if it was all like that was was about two pounds today. I was like, oh my god, it's awesome! I can't wait. And you can't say who it. you picked it up at. No, it's on embargo for a few more weeks. <laughs> it was nice though. A two pound 
Alder Lake. Yeah, Lake. it was like, and it was like, I'm like, is this a demo unit? It was working. It was cool. A dummy. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Um, <clears throat> well, we'll we'll stay tuned for that. I'm sure we'll be able to disclose that in the next, uh, you know, couple of weeks, kind of thing. So stay tuned to Hot Hardware for that. Marco will have uh, will bestow upon us his knowledge. Um, but yeah, this thing weighs in at three point one pounds, which is is which is super thin and light. Um, I don't know what the Z height is. Yeah, eleven point nine millimeters Z height. So super thin. Core i seven twelve sixty p. That's twelve core CPU. Um, I think it's six six P cores and six E cores. Um, 15.6 inch full HD display, AMOLED, gorgeous, Iris XE graphics. And, um, I wish we had ARC in there, but, um, a one terabyte SSD. I don't know why, but Samsung, this was the only gotcha Samsung decided, and they make great SSDs. They put in a PCI express three SSD and it, you know, it only tops out at like two gigs a second. And I'm scratching my head because they could have dropped a you know, PCI Express 4 SSD, like a 980 or a 980 Pro, and really, you know, cranked to five, you know, five gigabits per, or gigabytes per second, excuse me, or higher if they wanted to. I don't know if that was a cost move or what, but PCI Express 3 SSD in there, still no slouch, a solid, you know, storage performance, 16 gigs of LPDDR5, that is soldered, it's a, it's a pretty thin machine. And then, you know, all the trimmings beyond that, um, really nice. Um, the, the other nice thing, and, and that's a good picture to stop at. Um, by the way, there's the charging brick. That's a 65 watt. Looks like, looks like a phone charger to me. <laughs> it's, the, it's about that size. The other nice thing is you do get a pen S pen support and this machine with its touch display again, OLED full HD display, really nice pen support. So, you know, you, you can, you have all that goodness that, samsung has refined over the years with s pen if you're into pens and and all that good stuff and you know because it's 360 it can turn into a tablet it's really a nice feature uh for this machine um pricing is 1549 as testing as tested excuse me it's not cheap um but it's a beautiful machine the display look at that okay you're you're way off access there and that that display is holding up that's oled for you um, holding up the, the brightness and contrast and um, super punchy. Um, <clears throat> I fired up an HDR, AKA HDR video just to try and, you know, push the display as much as I could. Super punchy, inky, um, you know, great brightness and contrast. Really nice machine overall um, with solid performance. Again, you know, you get all the built-in pen utilities uh with with the s pen if you're if you're into that you know samsung's really done a good job of refining it keyboards chiclet style full numpad which is kind of like wow okay <laughs> haven't seen that in a while on a thin light machine and a huge trackpad which is which is very responsive as well so good stuff um and performed pretty well it's, it's kind of an interesting let me see if i can scroll to the uh and get to the benchmarks Kind of an interesting mix. Look at that. Look at that display. We'll share that back out, Chris. I mean, talk about pop. <laughs> That's one of the uh, windows. So there's the there's the SSD. Two gigs, you know, read. 1.1 gig write. Eh, could be a lot better, honestly. You just drop a PCI Express Gen 4 in the slot. Um, you know, SSD. But <clears throat> there's all the, like, snappy goodness there and speedometer. Um, you know, super responsive. Um, and you know solid multi-threaded performance there's cinebench r23 as you can see you know way ahead of anything 11th gen okay previous gen intel obviously anything tiger lake and you know back in the hunt versus eight core ryzen systems um you know for sure um that's what's going to be in too <laughs> and it, it, it does it? Oh yeah, look at that! It beats the Mac Mini. Yeah, M1 <laughs> Mac Mini. Yep, beats the Mac Mini. I'm not sure it's going to meet beat the uh, the Studio with uh, you know M1 <laughs> Pro and Max, but <laughs> no, would have to look at that. But um, yeah, you know, solid performance. Let me see if I can get to some gaming. There's some Night Raid. You know, um, good stuff. I mean, here you've got up top. You've got the ASUS Zephyrus Ryzen 6900 HS eight core with with a Radeon, with its Radeon 6680M integrated graphics. That's an interesting data point right there. 
AMD integrated graphics is definitely more robust, definitely faster than integrated Iris XE. And, um, you know, we, we need to see those arc discrete GPUs come to this uh, laptop. Uh, that will change that picture dramatically. But, it, you know, you have to hand it to AMD. That Radeon 680M integrated is uh, pretty performant, right, Marco? That that was like really this, the unsung hero of that review because that machine came with the powerful 6800 discrete GPU and it's a gaming notebook, so everybody focuses on that. But when you look at that integrated GPU performance, that's awesome. So like it would be great... I'm sure something next gen's coming for socket AM5, and maybe it doesn't make sense to do it right now, but that bodes really well for next gen APUs for like entry level desktops. You're going to have like really nice graphics without the need for a discrete GPU. Yeah. <clears throat> that, you know, if, if we had one, you know, ask for, for mobile Alder Lake, it would be, you know, let, let's get, let's get uh, arc graphics in there. You know, integrated arc graphics would have been, would have been great but obviously that's a longer throw and they needed to you know that's coming i'm sure down the road but they needed to you know timing wise they needed to get get alder lake out the door and from a cpu standpoint it's 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 darn solid so there's and, you know we, we have a, we have a comment from the illustrious uh, nathan watson which would be oh. a really good segue to the final review we were going to talk about <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's move on to that then. That's a good idea. <laughs> so yeah, check out the check out the Galaxy Book uh, 2 um, Pro 360. If you're interested in a laptop that has some serious performance, um, great, it's solid battery life. It has like a 68 watt hour battery on board. So battery life is solid. I don't know how they did that. 68 watt hour battery and a 3.1 pound machine, um, but really solid battery life from, from a standpoint of uh, you know what it can deliver. 15 inch machine there's also a 13 inch version or yeah 15.6 inch display all right let's drop this one in nathan <laughs> wasson actually wrote this this is the samsung galaxy tab s8 <laughs> and uh premium android s pen prowess is what we said again you know when you think about <clears throat> what apple does with the ipad pro and the and and its pencil and how how much of a premium it sells for um it's it's amazing the value that some of these better Android tablets can bring. And um, again, Samsung OLED display, can't beat it. Why don't you uh, why don't you dive into this one, Marco? It's Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 powered, which I was pleasantly uh, surprised to see. Uh, that's a great SOC for a tablet because it can really stretch its legs in that extra thermal headroom, right? Yeah, so Samsung a few weeks back launched it, th launched, launched, it, launched three new S8s: the S8, S8 Plus, and S8 Ultra. Three different sizes, all similar configurations internally, except for the storage. But you know, all based on that Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen 1 octal core SoC. And this, you know, the 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 larger ones get a little unwieldy if you're if you're looking for that true tablet form factor. What's cool about this guy is you have that 1610 display, so 2560 by 1600 display. Um, it includes the S Pen, and with that fast Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 SoC, you have really, uh, as of today, the snappiest Android performance that you can get. Think of it as you know a big flagship phone because that's what it is without you know the cellular connectivity for making phone calls. <clears throat> that's a really cool image on the display right now. I believe it was uh, Nathan's girlfriend actually drew that with the S Pen. That's a custom artwork right Check there. Check that out. It shows you the kind of detail <laughs> and the kind of cool stuff you could do with the S Pen. You know, and overall, it it there's no real surprises in terms of performance. If you've seen what uh, eight Gen One can do in the benchmarks, it kind of trails some of the flagship phones. Uh, mostly, pro well, I'm speculating it's because of software optimizations where Samsung's probably more aggressive in the phones, knowing how they're going to get tested against iPhones, etc. But still, excellent performance in like um in in the wildlife test it, it only bled off a, a few percentage points i think it dropped to like its performance consistency was consistency was like 73% or something like that but what you got here is a, a truly premium build in a tablet with essentially the best android platform to build it on with an excellent display with an s pen with a, you know a, a <laughs> wide range of accessories including that folio keyboard cover and if you're looking for a premium Android tablet. There's just there's just not a lot out there. You can buy lots of crap Chinese ones, 
But if you want a premium leading edge Android tablet, um, this is really it. And thankfully it delivered. Nathan really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a, here's a good test. This is the, you know, graphics test GFX bench. Uh, this is the T-Rex a little bit lower end. I think it's open GL ES two point something. Um, let's go to Manhattan. I'm sure we did that. Yeah, there you go. There's the Manhattan number. Um, so it's competitive. It's in the hunt with, you know, higher end, uh, Snapdragon eight gen one, uh, smartphones, as you can see. So it's that kind of performance. You know, if you, if you think about, you know, what, what Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 can deliver in terms of Android, you know, gaming and in, in general, very performant chip um, and, you know, will deliver for, for tablet workloads pretty much anything you could throw at it. I mean, I can't imagine that you're going to have an issue with performance at all. Um, so really, really good stuff. There's the there's the wildlife test. Was I right with my, what was the, the bleed off? Was it? And do we have that in there? I think, I think it's in there. See, uh, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, maintain seventy three percent stability. My memory is yeah. not completely gone yet. You know, and and that's an interesting point. When when folks are looking at mobile benchmarks, you, you know, always look at hopefully the analysis that's offered on the web or wherever you're viewing it, it also looks at performance over time or thermal saturation it's 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 interesting that you know when you look at whether it's iPhones and even some of the Android phones depending on the manufacturer after the first couple of minutes you know of this test and we like to use it because it has a 20 minute you know loop it keeps the the first uh, unlimited you know, wildlife unlimited test is like a minute but the stress test loops it for 20 times so 20 minutes long and you can see this huge drop off in some phones certainly iPhones as well, um, where it just, it degrades right away. So immediately you lose 40% of your performance within like the first three to four minutes. Sometimes, you know, it's like five or six. Um, the better thermal solutions and handsets, you're laughing, I'm wondering why. Uh, <laughs> I'm a sick person. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that much we know. Um, the, the better thermal solutions and handsets and tablets, you know, they maintain longer and, de and degrade gracefully. You know, you might see, as you see here, an eight or nine minute, okay, now we trail off again. So th that's kind of important. So, you know, what's what's the performance like if you're loading this thing down constantly and you're actually doing something stressful for an extended period of time? How's that performance going to hold up? So another wrinkle to consider. Yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, good stuff. But, you know, for, for, go ahead. I was going to say, but for for six ninety nine, um, for I, I think like the iPad Pro and tablets like this are perhaps priced a little too premium for what they deliver. But in in light of the iPad Pro and the, the pricey accessories, six ninety nine is really not bad for this guy here. Yeah, and if you um, if you drop here, here's the battery test. This is a great great uh, example. Um, if you drop the uh, so it's got 120 hertz up to 120 hertz uh, adaptive um, dy dynamically adaptive refresh uh, display. If you set it to the 60 hertz setting and you just want to you know all you know maximize your battery life because obviously the the higher the refresh that you know it's going to tax your battery a little bit more. You're gonna you're gonna pull over 15 and a half hours of uptime from this thing, which is pretty darn good. And then at uh, 790 minutes you're talking 13 hours and that's at the 120 hertz refresh rate. Um, so the, the max refresh rate. And I guess, you know, can't say enough about OLED displays and specifically Samsung Super AMOLED. Really good display, beautiful display technology. And as you can see, the, the battery life holds up uh, pretty well as well. So, yep. Yeah, good stuff. What was the price point again? Because that's, that's six, key. Six, 699, 699 for this one. 699. And that doesn't come with the keyboard though, right? Just the pen. Correct. Comes with the pen, but not the keyboard. Okay, cool. So there you go. Starts you at six ninety nine. Now that you say that, I should make sure. But I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think so as well. Um, and that's the eight gig, one twenty eight gig of storage, eight gig of RAM, but expandable uh, with uh, with micro SD. Right. I think you can yep. have a, a one tera <clears throat> to one terabyte micro SD in there. One point one pound has Wi Fi six E, which is great. Right, you're gonna have the the latest Wi-Fi because you're talking Qualcomm Snapdragon here. The only thing I, you know, I wish we had more access to. I wonder if they sell a version that's 5G ready. 
That seems like such a natural to me, especially I think, the Snapdragon I think one of I think one of the larger ones. It's an option. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Don't don't quote yeah. me. Oh, Nathan commented. I went to go look up the price. The, the keyboard folio is separate. It's a separate purchase. Eighty nine okay. bucks. Gotcha. I'm sorry. No, that Logitech one forty nine. I don't know what I'm looking at, but it's separate. <laughs> Yeah, good stuff for sure, though, from the folks at Samsung. I mean, you know, what's interesting is we we aren't hearing, unless you're talking like Amazon Fire HD tablets, we really don't hear much about Android tablets anymore, except for I Samsung. Just I, just had, I just had this conversation with an OEM today. Yeah. I, I think that that whole wave of the PC is dead, phones and tablets are going to take over, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and this, I think a lot of us went through this phase where you tried stuff, like a surface you try these detachables you tried some of the convertibles and they just don't hold up in every work environment i can't use one of those on my lap if i don't have a table i can't use it right and i think lots of people kind of went through that oh i like this form factor then they went to go use it and it's like okay this doesn't work for me and everybody returned back to clamshells so mm. i think that's why there's mm. it's now just a few premiums and lots of cheap just media consumption devices that the kids destroy or it sits mm. on the coffee table. At, at least that's my opinion. I'm, I need a good clamshell and a desk. When I'm working, I need my desktop. On the road, I need an actual clamshell notebook. That's just how I am. But you would, you would use this, and and you would, you would use something like this for like you're on, like you said, media consumption. You're on the plane. You want to watch a bunch of movies. This is nice and compact, right? And yes. uh, gets the job done. Something like so that, that. That's a perfect segue for two things. We posted <laughs> up a cool. We posted up something. I think it was over the weekend on this really awesome Anchor 100 watt USB C charger that sold out yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I was like, all right, I have a, my first trip in two years coming up in in, a, in about two weeks. And I'm like, I, I don't want to carry a bunch of chargers. So I found something similar to the Anchor. This is a hundred and a hundred watt four port USB C single charger. So that's something cool. And I'm getting ready for the trip. What did I pre prepare? I prepared a clamshell notebook and the Surface Pro X. Surface Pro X will be me watching movies, et cetera. And then the clamshell will be for work. Ha, there you go. I have to remember to drop some, some additional links in the chat here. Uh, hang on one second. I'm looking for the Samsung uh uh, there it is, the uh, Book 2 Pro 360. Let's drop that in the chat. I just dropped the tablet in the chat. There's the Book 2 Pro 360 review um, where you can find them on hotharbor.com. That is uh, pretty much a wrap, right, buddy? Yeah, a couple of quick things. We had a comment from Steve saying uh, HN1 mm. still gets destroyed by M1 iPad Pro. Um, not always, and that's why Qualcomm bought Nuvia. So I think uh, we're going to have some interesting performance mm, comparisons when that's going to be yeah when those chips come out, out. uh yeah. nathan confirming the keyboard was separate nathan also mentioning the s8 is an lcd panel the a plus and uh eight s8 ultra are oled yep my bad uh, s8 plus is the one that can be outfitted with 5g cellular good stuff right two on saying how much he loves his apple stuff oh, great <laughs> <I'm glad>. oh. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> i think that's about it uh, and yes um, and chris yes it's a it's a gan charger yes Gan charger, cool. Yeah. We should drop. We should drop the uh, Amazon link in there. We'll maybe we'll put it in the comments in the description or whatever, because that's a that's a cool uh, cool little gizmo for sure accessory. Yeah, it's like now I can have my watch, phone, both laptops, one charger. So it's like my bag will be empty. Yeah. There you go. Find that thing on Amazon. Drop it in the chat. Drop it in the description below, and uh, we'll be oh, good to go. On. I will do it right now <laughs> if it's still there. <laughs> And uh, in the meantime, you can find us on the web at hothardware.com, twitter.com slash hothardware, youtube.com slash hothardware vids. Marco, we are lining up a system giveaway. Folks, check our site on a regular basis. Uh, we try and do it every month. Sometime we skip a month or, or two here and there, but we give away systems and laptops and all kinds of stuff all the time. Um, we are lining up what I believe to be Marco, correct me if I'm wrong, an Alder Lake gaming desktop. Uh, no, I think it was 5800X3D. No. no, yes, but Ry a Ryzen 5800X3D desktop we are lining up. So stay tuned. That would be a seriously powerful gaming machine that we're going to be putting together with uh, a manufacturer to be announced. 
Um, but you can find us on the web at Hot Hardware. That's where we do these giveaways. Uh, we tend to announce them as well on, on you know, different socials and, uh, you know, uh, occasionally on YouTube and things like that. But stick around because you could win something and you can find us on the web, hothardware.com, twitter.com slash hot hardware, youtube.com slash hot hardware. Hit thumbs up and subscribe, please. We would appreciate it. So you can get notified when we go live on the next one. Did you drop that thing in the chat yet, Marco? It's in there. I did it already. At a boy. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, we'll thank you so much for stopping by.